I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction. Here with your cattle market summary for the week ending March the 15th. Brought to you in part by Cargill Emerald RNM or Right Now Mineral. Grass changes with the seasons. Shouldn't your mineral? Right Now Minerals are formulated to allow you to match the mineral feeding program to the growing seasons, forage conditions, and nutritional needs of your cattle. Learn more at rightnowmineral.com. The storm aftermath uh, in Nebraska mostly, it, it stretched into parts of Kansas, uh, Iowa, Missouri, but uh, mostly in Kansas and, and most all of Kansas uh, has been terrible. I think uh, most of us that are involved in, in uh, animal agriculture, cattle business, uh, for the most part, uh, if you're on social media at all, you got all kinds of... Uh, of pictures, stories, photos, this and that, uh, the telling the story about it, but people helping people. Uh, I've noticed uh, there are some people that are donating hay, some people that are donating hay freight, trying to help people out and, and get them, uh, you know, get some feed to their cattle if they don't have any access to it any other way. But, uh, but uh, a lot of good stories of people helping each other, and I tell you what, we haven't seen the worst of it yet, especially along the Missouri River. Uh, I know St. Joe, Missouri being from there, I uh, know it, uh, it's prone to flood and depending on how the Army Corps of Engineers lets the water out, but uh, with all that uh, melted snow and the big rains and the flooding that's happened in Nebraska, it's coming down the pike and, and they're saying it could be as bad as, as 93, which was devastating. But uh, we'll, we'll hope the best for all those people. And, and by the way, I want to uh, thank all of you that uh, shared my, my feeder flash video for Friday. That was the most watched video I've ever had. And I've been doing this for a long, long time, both with USDA and, and with uh, DV Auction now. But uh, that was great. Got the word out a lot on there. And of course, I got on my soapbox and, and did some preaching there. But uh, Really, if you get outside uh, social media and kind of local people, uh, some local coverage, uh, some ag media that covered uh, the cattle loss in, in uh, the from all the storms that we had over the last week or so, uh, that it's kind of stopped there. You didn't see any major media uh, for the most part out there, and uh, from what I've heard, uh, nobody that was involved in all this really gave a damn about those. Uh, rich people that were out there bribing their kids way into fancy colleges, but that's about all you heard on big media last week. But uh, I tell you what, very, very significant uh, in the cattle industry, in the protein industry. Uh, you know, we talk all the time about we're not sure if it's going to make a difference. This one's going to have to make a difference. I tell you what, uh, you just take the state of Nebraska, and like I said, it goes in other places, but you take the state of Nebraska. That's one of our biggest cattle states. Uh, the lion's share, probably uh, three quarters of the or more of the herds there are spring calvers. Okay, you take uh, at least that bigger percentage of those spring calvers are right in the high time of calving because they've got to get the, most of the calves on the ground before they would normally start to plant corn and, uh, and they want to get their calves as big as they can. Uh, and whenever they sell them in the fall so everybody's in high time a cabin right now and you just figure uh, let's say a decent sized herd those guys are probably having 30 to 50 calves a day maybe in, in some cases well all of those cattle were lost uh, for two or three days there at least you know it's a you know I heard somebody saying there might be 10,000 cattle it would have to be in the hundreds of thousands because uh, we, we talked to a lot of people that lost a significant number of cows, uh, a major portion of their calves, uh, the newborns and the ones that they just had on the ground the last couple of weeks, uh, very, very significant. But uh, we'll have to see how it works coming down the line and, and you hate to take advantage, but uh, you don't get too many advantages in this cattle market. So uh, you have to hope that this market kind of realizes uh, all this death loss that we've seen and, and weight loss too and and I tell you what you just look at some of the uh, the situations out there the feedlots got it as bad as the guys that were trying to cap 
Uh, we saw feedlot cattle running down the streets in some places. They were in that blinding blizzard and they pushed and pushed on the fences till they finally either walked over them or, or uh, pushed, them, pushed them over and a lot of cattle wandering. Uh, this is probably my favorite picture. I'm sure a lot of you had seen it when you look at it and you think uh, initially it's just the high waters and and uh, kind of the, the flooding that's going on. But then you zero in on these little islands that are left around in the flood waters and you see what's really happening out there. But a lot, a lot, a lot. Stranded cattle, wandering cattle, uh, missing cattle, death loss. And then it's not going to end. I uh, uh, had a, a guy send me a, a text that he sent out talking about how uh, in similar situations like this in the past, he's seen more sickness and death loss from the calves going down the line. So you guys want to be sure and, and remember that. You may need to go in and reback your cattle. You may need to uh, uh, go in and, and just kind of give them a, a general uh, antibiotic. And I know that's really bad because, you know, nobody wants to, to have antibiotics in their cattle. Well, when our kids get sick, we doctor them, don't we? And, and, and these calves are, are these people's kids, basically. And, and if they need to kind of give them a preventive because of all the stress and everything that they've been under, the more susceptible to get sick. Uh, a lot of stuff floating around in that water. And, and a lot of uh, minor injuries could turn into major ones. But we'll start talking about the markets now. Uh, the hog deal has helped. You know, hog is, is, is a real big competitor of, of beef. Uh, you know, pork is, is not too bad of stuff. And even though it's all kind of factory farms on the hog side, uh, we're, we're, we feel akin to the, to the pork producers and their industry. A, a lot of our cattlemen at one time were hog producers before that all went away. And those guys should be looking out to make sure that the cattle don't go the same way. But hogs have been cheap for a long, long time. And, and they're a very good competitor because they got a pretty good product. But we've seen a major rally in the hogs here recently uh, because of talk with uh, China importing some U.S. pork to kind of cover their needs from all the losses they've seen from the African swine fever. And, uh, and our, our great President Trump uh, working with them on trade and things. And, and uh, if, if they take a significant amount of pork, just remember how many people are over there. I mean, it's just... You can't, you can't believe it living in this country, how many people that they have over there. And, uh, but that is starting to really make a difference in the cattle market too. So it, it's kind of rising too. And we saw a rally on Friday a, a little bit, especially uh, on out fronts and things uh, it, that uh, is brought on by the hogs and also uh, record open interest in your live cattle uh, pits and uh, people rolling from, from uh, April into June and, and we're just seeing a lot of activity going on in the board but uh, it's being played very heavily right now. Your April live cattle futures on Monday were down 67, Tuesday down 235 if you remember that, Wednesday up just two cents, Thursday up 72 and Friday up a dollar 70 there with help from the from the hogs there to end the week with April live cattle at 129.10. That was down 57 cents for the week. Your June actually gained ground as I talked about people rolling into June. Uh, it ended the week at 121.92, up 97 cents for the week. So it's getting a little shot in the arm. March feeder cattle, Monday was down 162, Tuesday down a dollar, Wednesday was up a quarter, Thursday down 45 cents and Friday up 22. Uh, that's on your March feeder cattle. Your out fronts on your feeder cattle contracts were sharply higher. And, uh, and we saw those big gains up there. And, and I don't know if some people, uh, you know, speculators, traders in Chicago maybe saw something about all the dead calves and they thought, hey, wait a second, those are going to be feeder cattle in the future. And, and they bought it. But I doubt they made the correlation on that. Uh, maybe they saw the weather. I'm not sure if they know whether the weather is positive or negative, but probably had more to do with the big open interest in the live cattle arena and uh, and your hog rally. So <laughs> that's what we see there. But your March feeder cattle contract ended the week at 141.32, down 260 for the week still. 
and uh, April was at 146.92, down 77 cents for the week. Your fat cattle trade, of course, we traded early in the week, if you remember. Uh, with the storm coming on, uh, guys decided to go ahead and uh, take a buck lower for the cattle at 127 and uh, and 203 to, to mostly 204 and that was a Wednesday trade so that we saw that and then, then it was kind of quiet but then with the aftermath of all this flooding in the northern plains uh, Nebraska we saw some more trade kind of develop late on Friday and actually your packers were scrambling around trying to uh, get cattle for immediate uh, slaughter to try to kill some or fill some some Saturday slots and then trying to get ready for Monday's kill because a lot of those feedlots that had already sold cattle there are having a tough time delivering them because of, of roads, bridges being washed out, hard to get cattle out, can't get trucks in to get them out. And so you saw your packers calling around and kind of scrambling trying to get a uh, kill put together uh, for, for immediate delivery. And of course, just like they always do, your cattle feeders were more than happy to help them out because they're always so good to them on the trade. But uh, you saw some trade there, continued trade steady, 127. Uh, we heard of uh, rumors of some trade, and, and there was some trade, but rumors of more trade at 128. We'll, we'll see more about that uh, when the Monday re uh, uh, roundup reports come out. But uh, it, was, it was a shot in the arm. It was a positive. And you saw that in some of your Friday and Saturday feeder cattle auctions that it's a little bit more of a positive. As bad as the weather deal was, it is having a positive effect on the market. We saw some more 204 trade where, where they were trying to get the market pulled down up north to 203. We saw 204 trade and uh, we'll call in for 205. So that's kind of a, a, a significant thing and kind of a boost there late in the week, as bad as things were, as much of the destruction and devastation, death loss of all the flooding up there and the guys in the Southern Plains field form, they had their bouts with wind earlier in the week, uh, last week. And, and, uh, but we're starting to see a little shot in the arm from, from this market. Uh, box beef cutout values, it, it appears that your box beef cutout values peaked last week uh, we saw them, we saw them up and down uh, actually ending the week on the average trade of last week higher but at the end of the week it was it was starting to tail off quite a bit but your average trade for last week on choice cuts was 22770 that was up two dollars and76 cents for the week but your last market on Friday was 226.99 so we're seeing it going back down the other side of the slope. Your select average trade was 219.07, up 93 cents compared to the average for the previous week. But your your last sales on Friday were 217.34. So that's that's a pretty elevated uh, uh, mark there compared to what your fat cattle uh, cash market is. But it it's peaked now for the spring and then it's going to slide back down. But you got a choice select spread of eight dollars and sixty three cents on those average trade totals and 518 loads of cuts, grinds, and trimmings last week, which was a little bit off the pace. Your slaughter for last week, 593,000. It would have been bigger, but due to the wind and the, and the floods and everything, some of these plants weren't able to, uh, to run as, as uh, high a capacity as what they would have liked to. But 593,000, that's 10,000 off the previous week. 8,000 off the same week a year before and they are really going to want us, uh, to crank these things up. They've got a lot of out front orders to fill that they've already made and this is a time when they're making uh, as much more money than they make all year and they've really got to push to get as many cattle uh, harvested as they can to, to fill their coolers and, and fill these meat cases up because it's starting to get ready for, for uh, grilling time. After all the bad weather that we had last week, the weekend pretty much all through cattle country was pretty darn nice. And now people are starting to remember what it was like to have some decent weather. And, and of course, guys in Nebraska got a lot of stuff to work through to get things back to some kind of normal. But, but uh, we saw uh, nice weather all through the middle part of the country over the weekend. Let's talk about your feeder cattle markets, your real-time index ending the week last week at 136.13 that was about three bucks lower uh, than the end of uh, the previous week 
Your cash feeders and your auctions sold two to five dollars lower on feeder cattle weights. Your calves and stockers, where they were offered, were kind of unevenly steady. It all had to do with the storm and uh, how the weather was. Uh, of course, none of your hardly uh, northern feedlots were able to take any more cattle in. I heard of some cattle being purchased last week, knowing that they were going to have to leave those cattle sit in the auctions for several days, and, and they, they hate to do that because that's never a good thing to let cattle sit around an auction market just kind of getting stale and, and waiting to get shipped, but that was really all some of them could do. And But I think we should come into this week uh, with a whole lot better weather, a little shot in the arm late in the week from your, your uh, fat cattle trade, and uh, where they can have a sale, not in the floodwaters, but when you get and uh, the meat of uh, your five areas in Kansas and, and Texas Panhandle, Oklahoma, all around. They, sh they should have a pretty good demand for feeder cattle, especially from your Southern Plains feeders. But uh, let's look at some uh, individual quotes on some sales late in the week there. Torrington Livestock Market, they were not able to have their Wednesday sale, but on Friday uh, they did have a sale, even though it was only 1,300 head because they weren't far from a lot of the the bad flooding and, and uh, their weather was horrible there early part of last week with this, the blizzard that come through but you can understand it was just a storm market there but guys come out with guns blazing to buy these lightweight stalker cattle you saw this string of lightweight steers 100 head 522 pound steer calves that's not just a flat five but nearly five and a quarter bring two dollars a pound and uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of that yet this spring, but we're starting to see more and more. But a really lofty quote I see was 102 head of 598 pound steers bring 183.50. That's 600 pounds at 183.50 or $1,100 a head. That's pretty darn good, uh, especially when you're up there not too far from where all the floods are at and, and everything. But uh, people got to get these cattle bought. A lot of these... Uh, Places will turn out the middle of April and they've got to get those cattle bought and get them put together. Uh, you talk about another market I want you to look at a little bit. Santa Teresa Livestock Auction down on the border, on the Mexican border, Santa Teresa, New Mexico there. They've got a new nice auction facility right on the border. These are all Mexican cattle coming north and uh, you just see the disparage between the heavier weight cattle and the lighter weight cattle and it is huge. Uh, the, the nobody really wants those feeding type Mexican cattle and uh, and yeah they might be plainer they might uh, not have uh, much English blood in them they might be crossed up quite a bit anything grades anymore guys uh, these plain cattle the guys that are feeding these plain cattle if they can keep them healthy they're making more money than anybody because uh, you know what the, the cattle grades so easy I think it has a lot to do with the camera grading that everybody uses now, but uh, it's just so easy for cattle to grade. You know, uh, you know, 20 years ago or even 10 years ago, uh, you were lucky in the Southern Plains to get, you know, 40 to 50 percent of the cattle to grade choice. Now it's way up in the 70s. It's just unbelievable. But the the plainer uh, Mexican feeder weight cattle don't bring that big a price, but those hardy green. Uh, really uh, uh, foolproof compensatory gain thin uh, cattle the lighter weights that everybody wants to turn out they bring as much or more than cattle uh, well up into the Midwest but look at all these uh, big strings of cattle from Santa Teresa there I'm gonna go heavy and then go light 55 head of 914 pound steers bring 113.50 166 weighs 785 at 12550 and you're thinking boy those sound worth the money and they do to me too now you're getting into the lighter weight stalker type cattle 163 head of 512 pound steers bring 174 and a half they won't bring that very many places guys and then some lighter ones yet 50 up 58 of them weigh 422 at 196 dollars so pretty steep there on some light thin green stalker type cattle coming from Mexico north. But uh, that's a look at your uh, week's markets and a little discussion on the storm aftermath from the Home DV Auction Office here in Canyon, Texas. We'll talk to you next week.